Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about control systems topics. In this video I would like to discuss the transfer function from a body plot. So how to determine a transfer function from a given body plot or body diagram. What we have is the body diagram for the for a system. We don't know yet what it is in a transfer function form. We have the gain and also the phase given. And what you see is already uh, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see in blank the actual body plot for the magnitude, for the gain. And I've placed some lines and I will discuss this shortly, why I placed this there and how to um, do it for the next uh, body diagram if you see another example, another exercise. <coughs> what you should remember here is uh, the following key elements. Uh, what you have is for the DC gain, which is actually also called the zero radians per second, what you see is that the gain or the slope of the gain is zero. So we have a constant gain for, let's say, zero radians per second. It is not exactly zero here, but you can already estimate that this will stay horizontal for lower frequencies. So we assume at DC is it is zero. I've already placed a uh, asymptotic line, red line, and I will need that shortly. What you need to then determine is what are the break frequencies or what are the corner frequencies of your body plot. So to determine that, if you just look at your actual body diagram for your gain, you cannot directly pinpoint that. So what you do is that it will be helpful to make some tangent lines. So this is the first tangent line for the gain at DC. For the next one, the blue line, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see I have placed the blue line at the change of the slope of this part of the uh, of this graph. So if I have a decreasing line, and then this will, of course, reduce its degree, so the slope will, again, be approximately zero here. So I will take actually the, where is this uh, slope maximum? So if I take this maximum, so I will also make this slope line or tangent line, then I will have an intersection point between these blue line and this red line. And that one will give us a break frequency or one of the corner frequencies we will use later on. Now, then I have approached a new region, which is now again a slope of zero. And I have again a place a new tangent line, which is again in red. Then I have... I, I see again that the actual curve is decreasing. So what I do is again a similar form. I will take the tangent line uh, at this uh, part of this graph and I will make a intersection of this and this red line. So I have actually now three break frequencies. This one, I will uh, make this uh, clear shortly what it is. And I have the second one and I have the third one. Let me uh, emphasize what it is. So this one is because it is decreasing, so it causes the gain of this curve to decrease. It is called a pole. If you have a break frequency which will, which will make the gain increase, it is a zero. So this is a pole, so we have the first pole here. We have a zero there, and we have another pole there, so because it is again decreasing. What you also uh, should check is your phase. That will, of course, confirm your analysis here. So if I look at this, it is a break frequency for a pole. I know at that frequency, if it is a first order, that will give me minus 45 degrees phase shift. So I see around 10 to the power zero, just, just one radius per second, I see approximately minus 45 degrees. So it is very close to what we actually have anticipated here. Now, if I, of course, look at the zero, because a pole will contribute a negative phase and a zero will contribute a positive phase, of course, if it is a non-minimum phase system. That will be, of course, discussed later on if it is a non-minimum or minimum phase system. So we have now a non-minimum phase system. So we have Again, we start with the zero phase, zero degrees, and it will have a gain here of 50 dB. And then it will then, at this break, break frequency will reduce, and then we have a phase of minus 45 degrees. 
if I catch up here at this new co uh, corner frequency, I will of course add a positive phase. So that is actually also seen here. So it will try to decrease, but you will of course re uh, approach a zero. So your new corner frequency that will of course again make this phase larger. So it will again increase. It will increase, increase, increase until it again approaches a new corner frequency. So again, it will decrease. And then finally, if you have, of course, you have now two poles here and one zero that means you will have minus 90 degrees actually in total phase shift for each pole and you have a plus 90 degrees for each zero so let me summarize this at this corner frequency for a first order system you will have at this corner frequency for the pole you will have a phase shift of minus 45 degrees but its phase contribution in total will be for infinite frequency will be minus 90 degrees and this will also contribute minus 90 degrees so it will be in total minus 180 degrees but if we have a zero so it will be in total minus 90 degrees plus minus 90 degrees and then plus 90 degrees due to the zero so if i summarize what we have now discussed so what we have if is the i will do that in blue so what we have at dc so at DC, which is, of course, omega is zero radians per second. I can see that my gain is 50 dB. And my phase is zero degrees. This is really important because if your phase is, for example, minus 180 degrees, you will have a inversion of your gain so if it is for example if this is for example uh, 25 uh, it will be minus 25 if it, of course not in dbs but just as a factor so that will be of course important so if i now convert this to a scalar that will be 10 to the power minus 10 to the power 50 divided by 20 that's just, just a fam familiar formula i will get uh, 316 very close to that and that will that is called now the dc gain i will come to that shortly why it's called the dc gain kdc okay the next one is uh, are the break frequencies so let me do that in red so the break frequencies or corner frequencies that's also used so the break frequencies or the corner frequencies so let me do that also in blue so we have the first break frequency. So let me do that the pole, pole one, which is at, if I look at it here, 10 to the power zero, which is just one. So I have seen, because this intersection between these red line and this tangent blue line. So this is actually the first break frequency, which is now, if I write it down, omega P1 over just p1 that's also possible so that is now 10 to the power 0 radians per second or it is just one radians per second okay that's actually for the first one we will use that later on for the second pole pole 2 that's it is located here now what you see is if you if i go down in the frequency it is this one so what is this actually this one is 10 to the power 2, which is 100. This is 200, 300, 400, and 500. Then I am actually at my break frequency. Let's do that again. 200. So if it is this, I go down. Maybe I make it, which is this one. So this is omega P2. So again, 200. 300 400 and 500 so i will now have my break frequency omega p2 which is five times 10 to power 2 radians per second which is just 500 radians per second okay i have now determined the pole locations now this is the final one is the zero so that's that here so the intersection between these tangent line or blue line and this red line which is at this intersection if i go down i will have a zero there which is 10 to the power 2 and then it is done two times 10 to the power 2 i mean 10 to the power 1 i mean and then it is done two times 10 to the power 1 which is this just 20 so i will also make that clear 
So that is omega z, which is just one zero, so we will don't number this. And this one is omega p1. We've already did, done this. So let me also do that. So for the zero, I will just use the green. Uh, so we have a zero, omega zero, which is at 2 times 10 to the power 1 radians per second, which is 20. Okay, I have now the necessary elements for my transfer function. I have the DC gain. I know it is not uh, inverted, so it is not an inver inverted gain because the phase shift of, uh, is 0 degrees. I have the pole locations and I have also the location of the zero. So, how does the transfer function look like? What is the general uh, form of a transfer function. So the transfer function, let me do that here, the transfer function. So the transfer function in general is is given by GS, which is just uh, of course the name of a transfer function. If I a little bit zoom out. So what we have is your DC gain. So it's just your DC, KDC times the number of poles in the numerator divided by the, the, the product of the poles in the denominator. So you have the zeros, uh, product of the zeros in the numerator and the product of the poles in the denominator. So what you have, for example, we have now one uh, zero, which is just S divided by, which is given in this form, S divided by the omega Z, Z plus one. This is just the standard form to write it down. You can also do it in a different form, but this is, uh, I think, the most uh, handy way to do it. Divided by the first omega, P1, just first pole, and then again plus one, and then S divided by omega P2 plus one. You can also see why this is a handy way to write it down. If I want to know what my DC gain is, that means actually omega is zero, which is exactly the same as S equal to zero. If I make X S equal to zero, this will disappear. So I will get only one. This will disappear. So I will again get the one. And this will disappear. So I will again get one. This is one times one. And then this one. So actually one divided by one. And I will get only the KDC. So you can already see uh, read uh, read from this transfer function what your dc gain is just looking at this uh, value here so the coefficient is directly seen as the dc gain if i now just write down what i have so i have the 316 i have the 1 and the 520 i will just substitute everything in it so then we will do step by step the transfer function so let's move on and i will do that in in red for uh, i mean in in blue for the dc gain and and the poles and then for the zero I will do that in green. So what we have is then so let me so I have 316 times let me make the template ready so it is S divided by something that will be substituted shortly so S divided by plus one and then s divided by something and then plus one so if i now do it in green what i have for the zero which is just 20. if i now have the blue which is now here one and i have of course the 500. so you can see directly what is actually substituted in this very general form of course if you have more than uh, one zero you will have add another term here for example s plus z one plus s divided by z omega z1 plus 1 times s divided by omega z2 plus 1 etc the more you have the more factors you get okay so this is actually the form this is not really a handy way to write it down so what we actually want is uh, get rid of these fractions so what you can do is you can multiply the numerator and denominator by 20 so that will help and it will make this s and it will make this uh, 20 so it will actually one of the uh, step so that we do that first so you will get g of s will be 360 that will be as it is so you will get s plus 20 because we have now multiplied by 20 this is just one 
So s divided by one is just s, and then plus one. So you will get s plus one. I need also multiply the denominator by 20, and I will just choose one of these uh, terms. So I will choose this one or that one. I will choose that one. This is much more uh, handy to work out because if I do it here, I will get the 20s plus 20, which is not really necessary at the moment. So I will try to reduce that one because what I want is I want to have a, a terms like s plus something, s plus a number, s plus a number. So I would like to keep the s isolated without any coefficients. So if I now do that 20 times that, so 20 times this one, it will be 20 divided by 500 will be 25 in the denominator for that one. So you will have s divided by 25 plus 20. Okay, the next step is, as you can see from here, that will be, of course, now multiplication with a 25. So I will get rid of this fraction. So you will multiply this term by 25 and also this by 25, but, but I want to keep it like this here. So what I want to do is for that 25, I will multiply it with this one because that one all can be also placed in here. So that's actually what I do. So I will do 316 times 25 and then s plus 20 divided by, I will do it in parentheses for for more clearance and you will have s divided by 25 times 25 which is just s. That's why we had the 25 and then here you get a 500. And that's actually what it is. So what you see is that directly, which of course already seen here, you get a 20 for your zero, you get a one for your pole, first pole, and another one for their, for your other pole, so it's 500. And this one is 316 times 25. That's not your DC gain, that's just a gain of, uh, just a, a, a coefficient of this expression. So if you do the math there, you will get 7,900 times s plus 20 divided by again in the parentheses so s plus 1 and s plus 500 of course you can say it is much more handy and also much faster to write it in this form but the thing is how you determine this one then that's actually the, uh, another uh, another problem you can do that of course it's just there are many ways to do this it's not the only way but most of the time, you will also see in the literature that they write it down in this form and then move on and make the simplification and make the final result look like this. So if you, of course, want to do it like this and then determine this one, that's also possible. It's not, uh, it's not specifically wrong. Okay, uh, this was for the first example about the body plot and from that determine the transfer function. I will continue with different topics and, the, of, and also for the body, the, uh, body plot and determining from that the transfer function. But this is just one example, of course. You'll have many examples. And if you see a lot of different examples and also different uh, 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 graphs, you will see that there are also other situations where you need to consider. For example, you can have a minimum phase system. You can have, of course, a pole which is complex or maybe a zero which is complex. So. This is just a really standard uh, situation where it is not really that difficult. So you can see directly where the break frequencies are. Sometimes it's not really that clear. So you have to make a little bit of an estimate. And again, check always your face because it will confirm that you're in the right direction. Otherwise, if you just focus only on the gain, it can be that this one, for example, it is minus 316 instead of 316. So that will be, of course, a phase inversion. In, in the in the sign okay i see you next time and uh, take care and if you have questions just please place it in the comment section i will try to answer them as soon as possible